Hello everyone, Hypers here, and in this video I will give you a quick rundown of what you should be doing week 1 of the new raid, Ashara's Eternal Palace, to gear up your character as fast as possible, and kind of what essences, azurites, and trinkets we should be looking at as death knights. So for week 1, uh, just to give you guys some idea, my goal on my DK is to have rank 57 neck by day 1, um, at least. And then obviously throughout the week level that up and then by the later mythic bosses to have at least level 60 neck because the rank 3 crucible trait is very very good for unholy. So um, as far as general things you, sh you should be doing is obviously spamming plus 6 keys because that's where the loot caps. So you will be getting 415 item level loot from doing a plus 6 key and obviously this loot can titan forge. And it's very important to do plus sixes because they're the most time efficient and you just want to fish for that Titan Forge item um, as much as possible throughout the week. So towards the end of the week, also, if you are someone who's into PvP, even if you're not into PvP, you should get a group together and push some PvP rating. Now, I say that you should do this towards the end of the week because usually the first few days, the latter is kind of competitive. And on the weekend, you have the more casual players log on, and it's a little bit easier to push your, your rating if you happen to want that extra chest at the end of the week. And then one other thing that you need to do uh, is do at least one high key, as high as you can. Uh, what my guild is doing is saving a very high key from the previous week, so that way on the heroic week, we have one high key that we can do just to maximize the amount of residue we get the following week whenever mythic comes out so that's basically the general things um let's look at dk specifically so day one i will be playing on holy the difference between unholy and frost in single target is uh leaning more towards unholy but as a lot of you know when it comes to mythic usually what dictates which spec which spec ends up being better is actually fight design rather than which uh, spec ends up simming a little bit higher. So for Heroic, I'm playing on Holy. Um, I might dabble with Frost once we start doing our reclears, um, but day one I will be playing on Holy. And the Azerite Essence setup I will be using is Crucible of Flame Major with Lucid Dream Minor or World Vein Minor, depends on how many other people are using it in melee. If at least four or five people uh, opt to use this in melee, that I will run World Vein. If kind of none of the other melee are using it, then I just end up using Lucid Miner. Now, if you are playing Frost, which you know, if you want to, you absolutely can. Uh, you should be running Blood of the Enemy Major um, if you have rank three, and do Lucid Dreams Miner because that gives you just overall the best output. And Blood of the Enemy you should be using to um, maximize your Cold Heart damage and obviously use it within Pillar. So as far as Azerite items from the raid as on Holy, um, luckily all three of the raid items or slots we can get that are basically best in slot. So the Helm we get from Radiance of Ashara and it has Magus and Festermite. The Shoulders we get from Queen's Court, it has Festermite and Undulating Tides. And the chest we get from Zakul, and it has Festermite and Magus. For Frost, however, one of the items is kind of bad, that, and you want to use your Residuum to get it. Uh, but essentially, the Helm comes from Radiance of Ashara. It has Icy Citadel and Frozen Tempest. Shoulders come from Queen's Court, and it has Icy Citadel or Undulating Tides. Or the other shoulders you can also get are from Blackwater Behemoth, and they have Frozen Tempest and Echoing Howl. Obviously, those are a little more, uh, a little better on cleave, but on single target, they don't really fall that far behind. Then the chest, I think both of the chests that you can get out of the raid are kind of bad. Um, obviously, if you get them, you know, use them, but the chest slot is what you should be using your residuum to roll for the mythic eye level chest whenever the mythic week comes around. So the next itemization point here is benthic items. So basically what I'm doing is using the mana pearls from my alts to buy as many benthic boots as I can and just send them over to my main until I get socketed once. If you haven't been doing this, then obviously it's a little bit too late. 
because the socketed crit damage boots, um, Akana's Reef boots, they will increase your crit damage. And that's quite a substantial increase in DPS whenever you upgrade them to 425. At 425 eye level, especially if they're socketed, they will be much better than 445 pieces that you could be getting out of Mythic. And then kind of the secondary item that I'm looking at is the Waveblade Farseer Arm Guards. Now these are the Frost Damage Bracers. One thing to keep in mind with these is that they do not scale on AoE. So the more targets you have, um, the damage of them will not increase. Uh, but on single target, they're very, very good. Now these, you should only be looking at getting if you already have the boots upgraded um, and you have some extra mana pearls on your alts. I don't really recommend using mana pearls from your mains to buy these uh, just because you end up gambling away too much and you end up not being able to upgrade them to 425. So for the trinkets, um, basically I am going to be using the Mechagon trinket as silly as that might sound, but actually the Cyclotronic Blast red card, which you get from being revered with Mechagon, ends up doing a lot of damage. It's a two minute cooldown and it's an unused trinket. Think of like Gronk's Primal Rage. However, uh, you can actually do things while this trinket is doing its damage. So it has a 0.5 second cast and then a 2.5 second channel. During the cast, uh, you can't do anything else, but it's only half a global, so it doesn't matter. But during the 2.5 second channel, where the trinket is actually doing its damage, you can move around, you can press abilities, it doesn't matter. And also another nice thing about this is that if you use double unused trinkets, this Mechagon trinket will not incur the global trinket cooldown that trinkets end up having whenever you press them. So you can use a double unused trinket setup and you can just use them both together. Um, out of the raid, there's not really any particular trinkets that I'm looking at, um, specifically targeting. The trinket sims, I think, are also uh, not fully implemented yet, so we'll have to wait until Heroic Week actually rolls around, and we have some better data of which raid trinkets end up being better. Uh, there's a few that have potential. Um, for Unholy, the haste trinket that gives you more haste the lower the boss is, might have some potential on certain fights. And for Frost, I'm potentially looking at playing around a little bit with the Ashara Trinket that gives you main stat and you have to channel it uh, to get more main stat. Um, so we'll see how that turns out. But for Raid Trinkets, I would wait until Heroic Week, look at logs, and just kind of get an idea from there of what Trinkets end up being pretty good. The last point here is crafted items. And obviously a lot of you will be running blacksmithing and jewel crafting or engineering or com any combination of those three. Uh, because crafted items now have guaranteed sockets and mythic crafted items will be mythic eye level, so 445, and heroic crafted items will be 425. So once the raid comes out, you, you have a quest to go into the raid and upgrade your forge further, and then you will be able to craft these 425 socketed items. I would wait until the end of the week just to kind of see what you end up getting from Mythic Plus. At some point or another, you will have to craft these anyway, just to get the rank three recipes, but you might as well wait towards the end of the week, Saturday, Sunday, when math prices go back down a little bit and it's a little bit cheaper to craft them if you didn't happen to buy the mats beforehand. So for DK, obviously, uh, blacksmithing is very good because our benthic items, the best benthic items are the boots and bracers. So that doesn't interfere with our crafting at all, since from crafting, we get the belt and the legs. Um, and I wouldn't worry about rolling perfect stats for the 425 ones. Uh, wait until the 445 ones to try to optimize the stats. Um, and then whenever you also end up scrapping these to upgrade them to 445, you do get some of the mats back. For blacksmithing, it's not that important because they're not that uh, expensive to make. But if you end up crafting the, the jewel crafting ring, for example, that takes a lot of mats. Now for this, you definitely want to scrap the previous eye level version when crafting the new one, unless you're just rolling in mats and I guess you have, you have them to um, make as many rings as, as you want. So that's basically the... Um, 
profession rundown, I recommend going with blacksmithing tool crafting or blacksmithing engineering. Those two combinations seem to be best for DKs. Out of engineering, you obviously just get the Azurite helm, but that is very nice. Um, the traits on it are fairly decent, so it's a nice DPS increase. But the main thing about having a 445 helm is that obviously you can trade those Azurite pieces. If you get some other Azurite pieces out of the raid, you can trade them to your teammates, which is overall a huge increase. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you have any questions as far as what you should be doing to optimize your DK week one, make sure to join my Discord or leave a comment below and I will try to answer it as quickly as possible. In my Discord, I have a little more in-depth information about essences if you also want to check that out. Again, thank you so much for watching and have fun in the first week of the Eternal Palace.